Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're continuing our look at loops in VBA. We're going to be looking at the for each next loop in Microsoft Access. All right, so far we've covered for next, while when, do while, and do until. Today we're going to look at the for each next loop. Of course, I recommend you watch the four previous videos in this series. And this is a developer level video, so if you don't know how to program in VBA, go watch this first. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. And if you haven't watched my status box video, go watch this. It's how I prefer to show information to the user in a status box, which is basically a text box on a form. These are free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and come on back. All right, so continuing on with our loop database that we've been building over the last couple of videos, a for each next loop is different from the other kinds of loops we've looked at so far. Whereas the for and x and the while loops and all that, they usually use values, right? x equals 1 to 5, while x is less than 10, that kind of thing. Well, the for each loop looks at collections or arrays. It's more object oriented than what we've been dealing with so far. So a collection of items, a collection of objects or an array, a dynamic array of values, for example, Today, we're going to focus on collections. What is a collection, you ask? Well, a collection is a related group of things. For example, there's a forms collection. that has all the forms in it. There's a tables collection. Each form has a controls collection, which is all the controls on that form. The buttons, the text boxes, the images, all that stuff, the labels. That's all part of the controls on the form. That's the controls collection. There are a bunch of different types of controls in Access, and today I'm just going to focus on one of them, and that's the controls collection. So let's use that to loop through all of the controls on this form. All right, let's go to Design View. And we got a bunch of buttons in here, don't we? So let's copy this guy. I'm going to put this one up top over here, and let's bring this down a little bit. because we're changing, we're changing things up a little bit. All right, so let's make this for each um, uh, control loop, let's call it. And we're going to loop through all the controls on this form. All right, and we'll call this the for each button. All right, so let's right click, build event, bring up our code builder. Okay, now if we're going to loop through all of the controls in the controls collection, we have to have a variable to put each control in. So we're going to say, okay, give me the first control. Oh, that's a button. Okay, put that in, let's call it C for control. Uh, what's the next control? Oh, it's a text box. Okay, now we'll put that in C and we'll look at its properties. So we'll need a, a placeholder variable, a temp temporary variable for each object. So dim C as a control. That's a specific access type that says a control can be any of those objects, right? A button, a, a label, a text box. Uh, a combo box and so on, right? All the controls we know and love from Access. Now, how do I loop through all of them on the current form? Well, it's for each C, for each control in me.controls. Okay, controls is a property of me, which is the form that you're on. Okay, so lo loop through the controls collection of me, of the current form, and give me each control one at a time. That's what that says right, basically right there. And then when you're done with the loop, next, and it'll loop through all of them. What do we wanna do with each control? Let's take a look at its name. Status, status, C dot name. And that again is my status function, and that's it. That will display the name of each control on this form in the status box. Save it, come over here, close it, Open it back up again and hit the button. Boom, there they are. There is a list of every control on this form. The for each button, the do until goal button, right? Label 25, because our labels don't have names, right? Label 25, label 23, label 21, the interest rate that's over here, right? Goal amounts over here, that's that text box and so on. There's every control on this form, okay? And you can use, you can look at other forms too, as long as they're open. Like this guy, there's the, the customer form, right? You could come over here and say, for each C in forms customer F 
dot controls. Save it, come over here, hit the button. Boom, there's all of his controls, right? Email is active, credit limit, customer sense, family size. That's all the controls on this guy. As long as the form's open. If it's not open, that doesn't exist. You'll get an error message. Okay, that's why I'm gonna stick this back to me. Me. Now, what if you want just the text boxes? All right, just the text boxes. You can look at the control type. Control type is a property of a control. So if C dot control type equals AC text box, that's just a, that's a constant you have to know from access. I'll show you a list of them in a minute. Then we'll do that. And if this will show you all of just the text boxes. And let's blank the status box before we begin. So, we, so it's clear every time we run it. Okay, save it, close it, open it, click it. Boom. There's just the text boxes. See? One, two, three, four. And of course, five. The status box itself is a text box. Okay. And if you want a list of all these different control types, I'll put a link to this down below in the description. Here they are. All right. Here's AC text box, tab control, toggle button, page break, list box, label. They're all in here. I'm also going to show you this, which is the type of. All right, it's type of C is text box. This is a slightly different way of writing the same thing. It does the same thing, but it works differently. Type of C and text box, these are visual basic, they're VBA generic terms that will work across a lot of different applications, including Excel and stuff. I prefer this when dealing with access, the control type. All right, this is my preferred way of working with access. This will work with Excel and, and PowerPoint, but uh, I, I like the access specific. But I'll leave this code in here for you guys so you can see it in case you come across it. You know what it is. And I always say this with access and with Office in general and programming. Uh, there's a million ways to do the same stuff. You can find three or four different ways to do anything. I'm just showing you the way that I like to do it because I've been doing it this way for years. If you like learning this stuff, you want to learn more about for each next loops in my Access Developer 15 class. I use for each loops down here when we deal with multi-select list boxes. That's another great way to work with for each loops. All right, check that out. I'll put a link to that down below. And now in the extended cut for the members, I'm gonna show you how to use a for each loop to go through the items in a dynamic array. I showed you this in the array video extended cut. We loaded up a dynamic array with those ability score names, right? Strength, intelligence, wisdom, and so on. But what if you don't know how many names are in there? You can use a for each loop to loop through them without knowing how many, there could be two, there could be 200. All right, for each, we'll give you all of them. And then we'll do a second example. We're gonna make a button that's gonna clear all of the text box values on a form, like a reset button. So you got a whole bunch of stuff in here, you click the reset button, it's gonna loop through all the text boxes and clear them. And it's not as easy as you think. There's a couple of things you gotta watch out for. So that'll all be covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. All of them, there's hundreds of them. Not just this one, all of them. But that is going to do it for today's tech help video. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, 
including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.